War. What is it good for? A two to five player card game that takes about 30 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game War, World Auto Racing, you will be selecting a car and selecting a deck and attempting to beat everybody else out in a singular course race. Your deck is going to contain cards like courses and conditions that will be affecting everyone. Or maybe you'll have certain team members, modifications to your car, as well as even control cards that will affect the way the game plays. It's going to be taking place over a number of rounds or turns, and you'll be playing cards down on each of your turns until you can't play any more and ending that round, and thusly acquiring new cards from your deck and attempting to push along. At the end of each round, you're going to be adding a value for your handling and for your power, attempting to score as many points as possible. And if you can get to 100 by the end of a round and no one else is there, you'll win the race. First player up is the first player to start the game, and it continues until that player or somebody else hits that coveted 100 position and wins. Select your car and of course organize the deck however you want, along with five basic starting sets in the game War or World Auto Racing. To set up the game War, it's very, very simple. Go ahead and take your car, take a player aid, and then take the deck associated with the car. For your beginning games, I strongly recommend that you select the car with the deck before going ahead and creating your own customized deck. Each player will get their own individual car deck and card and separate the rest of the decks, cars and cards aside. You won't be utilizing them for the rest of the game, unless you're playing with literally all the players. Then go ahead and shuffle your deck of war cards really good. Make sure that they're nice and shuffled and place your car on the right hand side of your deck along with of course your player aid so that you'll know what happens between turns. Draw five cards at random from the top of your deck, place them, don't show anybody else except for yourself and everyone else will do the same. Then check to see who has the most uh, accumulated power and handling. Now usually it's going to be a tie at the very beginning of the game. Select a player to go first and begin the game war. Very, very simple. Card, car, deck, shuffle, draw five. After the setup for the game and all players have five cards in hand and before the first player starts, anybody who doesn't like the cards in their hand may shuffle them back into the deck and draw five new cards. That's called a mulligan and it only happens once per game if you do not like the cards in your starting hand. Then you are going to go ahead and begin by having that first player or the player who's in first place after the first round play a card. You can play any one card and only one time for each type, unless it's a control card. Each of the cards have different locations that you can place them in on the field. There's going to be uh, terrain cards and conditions that will go in the middle of the field for all players to see. There will be mod cards that will go on the left and right hand side of your car, and you only get two slots. You can upgrade those cards by placing a one, a two, and a three. Two goes on the one, and a three goes on the two. And you can't play a higher mod until you played the previously lower mod. And then you're also going to have team cards and you're going to have control cards. And control cards are basically the one-time actions. Actions like team and control are going to sit there at the bottom of your field and then be removed from the, into the discard pile at the end of a round. The only unique thing about control cards is that they function just like team cards, but you can play as many as you want on uh, a round, where in general, you can only play one of each type of card. So if you play a course card on your turn, for the rest of the round, you cannot play another course card. But if you play control cards, you can play any number of them, one on each turn, until the round ends and everyone chooses to pass. You start with five cards, and you might be able to gather more cards depending on the deck that you're utilizing. But the main point is, once you choose to no longer or can no longer place cards, you're going to pass. And each player will keep playing the game until everyone passes. Once everyone passes, then, and only then, will the round end. When the round ends, everybody will calculate the power and handling of their cars by adding any modifications, any multipliers, and then you'll calculate the score by adding both of those numbers, putting them together, combining them, and then placing them on a score sheet. If you hit the highest point value, the next round will begin. You'll be able to discard a card, you'll be able to draw back up to five, 
the person who's in the front is going to start and the play will continue like that. Playing down modifications, control cards, team cards, trait cards, conditions of the road, as well as of course the terrain. The last marking card is called a trait card. There's not a whole lot of them in each of your decks, usually about two of them, and you'll place them on the side of your car somewhere and it's going to give you a bonus action that you can take on your in, in during play and of course it has the same features and functions and rules associated with playing any other type of action card hit that coveted 100 points at the end of any round and if no one else is there as well you win if however there is a tie at, any, at the end of any one of those rounds you'll simply play another round and whoever has the highest score on that round will win and you'll continue the process until somebody does so each of the decks are unique, have their own different combinations, function differently and involve certain cards that will give them benefits or hurt other players, and the objective still remains the same with a whole bunch of options, itemization, and of course custom mods that you can use for your unique vehicles that also have a nice foil to them. Okay, so let's talk about the game now, other than just the how to play and set up. Now, of course, you're going to have your car, and you're gonna have your card here. And this is gonna help you not only track your progress for calculation as far as who's in front, and of course, winning the game, but it also explains how to play the game, which is very simple, and hopefully I did a good job explaining of how that works. Every deck is unique and different and functions in their own way, and uh, that is very, very true for this game. A lot of games do have that type of a feel, but this one specifically really, really feels different each, each of the different cards you have. Uh, there's a bunch of different cards in the game, and I'll kind of go over them like uh, control cards, right? These are cards that are actions you can play once a turn, but as many as you want in a round, and they do different things. Sometimes they'll pull cards from your graveyard or your deck, they'll remove cards from your opponent's side of the field. Some of them are very powerful and help you or hurt your opponents, and others kind of manipulate the specific deck or car to fit the strategy of that vehicle. Then you have things like mods. Uh, Decks sometimes don't have really great mods. Sometimes they're like rally tires, which give them benefits based on whatever the requirement is or, or uh, given benefit is at the bottom. Uh, and those typical cars will function more on like terrain, team, trait cards, course cards, uh, even control cards. Uh, and, and then other cards specifically focus only on mods. And as you increase them from level one to two to three as you play them, and remember only one mod card per uh, round that you play. So you're not gonna be able to play a one, a two, and a three on the same round. You have to wait till the next round to put the two on the one, etc, etc. But they get very, very powerful. And as you play the higher valued cards, they usually will have a check bonus, which means that when you play it, you can do something nice, like ignoring a condition, or, or replacing a part, or destroying a card in play. And uh, the mods are ways to generate uh, value onto your vehicle. Now, some cars are really fast with mods, but not have a lot of control as to maybe the terrain or the conditions. Whereas others maybe don't have a lot of great mods, but are able to manipulate their track, courses, and uh, how they play in order to basically get ahead in the game. Then you're going to have the courses and conditions. These things affect all players. Uh, one of them is going to be the uh, like a corner here, like a course. There's only going to be one course ever, period. So whenever you switch one out, a new one comes and the other ones stay on the bottom. And these guys will benefit the car specifically that you're utilizing for your deck. So if you have your course out, it's very likely that you're going to get a benefit as opposed to your opponent and vice versa. Whereas conditions kind of net different positives and negatives for all players. Some cars can ignore certain conditions. Other cars utilize them to their advantage and obviously there's a subtype like features uh etc etc whether uh, maybe the condition is going to be it's you're, you're working in the gutters but it's also rainy or stormy and so you can have multiple of these out and more conditions can be better for some cars or worse for other cars and then of course you're gonna have things like team cards uh, team cards are basically basically like control cards but you only need to play one every single round you can't play a team card pass next turn play a team card uh, and these guys are actually really useful very powerful and most of the time focus very heavily on on the card that you're working with. And then finally, of course, trait cards. Getting these out early is important because they give you a specific unique ability, like check at the beginning of each round, draw a card for each active condition. Sometimes they're passives, and sometimes you have to use them as an action, and it really just depends on the different traits and what vehicle it's associated with. And as you can see, they all function very, very uniquely to the deck that you're playing with. And I even strongly suggest using each of the decks presented here. It does offer uh, rules and explanation as to how you can create your own deck, but what is made here is made really well and with purpose and they might not seem to be equivalent because sometimes a car is going to jet ahead really quick whereas your car might be slow to build up but in the end run basically the decks are all very close and if you can play them well you will learn that there are certain unique tricks and tactics you can gather by placing cards down at a specific time and an appropriate location in order to succeed it's not about 
who gets to uh, the ending the closest. It's about who finishes the race, right? So if they're 10 feet ahead of you, it doesn't matter as long as you're able to pull 30 feet ahead and they only get five on the next round. And so it's all about build up for some cars. And then it's all about like for the speedsters about pushing as fast as hard as you possibly can before somebody messes you up or before the conditions or the, the track changes or the road. And that affects a lot of play. Uh, I like the fact as well that each of the different cars has their own specific unique ability that provides a lot of different unique gameplay. And of course, that when I'm playing these decks and cars, they feel very different. Like I know it's a thing I've stated multiple times, but that is the big uh, important benefit to this game is the fact that the differences in the cars all change. With more players, more shenanigans can happen, more things are going to hit the field, players are going to manipulate uh, the other players who are in first where they are not. Some cars push ahead and try and stay ahead, while others, when they're behind, will try and mess with players in, in ahead of them. And they have unique uh, twists and turns. And of course, with more players, the game is obviously more fun. But a head-to-head -head match, if you're just looking for a two-player game, this one does a good job of that as well. If you're a fan of TCG games, like trading card games, or card construction, or things like Smash Up, this fits very neatly into all of those with a minimal amount of different types of cars. There's going to be five cards and five cars and five decks, but an abundance of replayability and modifi modification. Uh, this is going to see a lot of play for a lot of you people who really, really enjoy car games, really enjoy those TCGs, and really enjoy going back and forth against each other. Uh, a little thing to note is on the back of the cards uh, for the player aids, you're going to see a progress calculator. This is going to identify how you're going to gain bonuses. It'll say, okay, your car has a stat bonus of 3-3, three, three, and then you get a bonus of 1-1 one, one, and 1-1 one, one for your mods, which is a 5-5, five, five, and you'll add up your power and your handling, and then you're going to go ahead and check any effects, and, and then modifiers like this condition gives you times two to handling and times zero to your power. And that will basically affect after all the modifications take place. And then whatever you have left over at the end is what you're going to score. So if you have a 13 and a 12, that's 25 points for you. If you have a two and a zero, that's two points. Or 20 and a zero, that's 20 points. And uh, how you add them up is a little complex in the game. You have to go through this track and really look at it to understand how it functions. Uh, my first game playing this, I could not grasp this, this at all. It took me like a bit and I had to have my wife come and explain in what order the process goes. Because there's quite a bit uh, to the card. Uh, but once you get it down, it's, it's pretty simple. And then another thing to note too is that courses and conditions are different in the fact that yes, courses are going to stay on the field unless the subtype of the same card is played, in which case that one will get discarded. But if there's multiple courses with multiple subtypes, they can all stay on the field. For some reason in my brain, I wanted to just only have one, um, one condition, not course, one condition on the field. But in reality, you can have multiple conditions while well, only one course. Maybe I said that right, I don't know. One course, multiple conditions, but if it's the same subtype, the condition will go away. And that makes sense too, because if you're working with like stormy and rainy weather, that might m make sense to a certain degree, but what makes more sense is like, uh, you're working in the gutters with, with stormy weather. So you have this different two, two types of subtypes. And you can have, I think, up to three different subtypes of conditions that can see play at any given time. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. The card quality is excellent, excellent, excellent. Really high, really nice card quality. Really great to shuffle the cards. The cars are beautiful. I love the foil aspect to it. I love the box and the design to the box. I really wish there was more explanation as to what this is because you can't see, all you see is world auto racing. You don't even know it's a card game until you actually open it up and begin playing the game. I'd like to know what I'm buying beforehand. This would probably be fine when you're buying online, but you're probably not gonna likely wanna have this type of a box in stores because people won't know what it is they're picking up if they're randomly going to pick up a game. Um, and I really do like the insert inside the box. It's really straightforward. Each of the different cars fit in, you pull them out, and of course, right on top goes the rule book. Excellent, uh, very, very good job. Uh, but this is being kickstarted, so it's not gonna be too big of a deal. I imagine this will go straight to backers and whatever's left will probably be sold online, so I won't critique the box uh, too much. And of course, this is a Kickstarter game, so there are things that are likely to change uh, as it goes. I don't know if it's fully done or not, but there's it's a Kickstarter, so it's possible to change. Regardless though, like I said, if you like all those things and don't mind the little negatives I have associated with the game, then it's something I would strongly suggest you take a look at. I enjoyed this game, I had a lot of fun with this game, and I think the theme really lives up to the style of gameplay and of course the name itself. We'll have a live stream this Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, and you can watch us play the game and learn more for yourself if you're not sure if this is a game for you or not. 
War World Auto Racing. Take a look down below right now. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game War World Auto Racing. If you're interested in picking up the game, it's on Kickstarter. Link down below in the description. And of course, you can go ahead and also subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more of our videos every day, Monday through Friday, and our live streams on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. If you'd like, you can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. There's a ton of great stuff there, including giveaways for you to win games just like this one. In fact, we have a plan to give away one of these games during the campaign. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to battling it out with you in the world of auto racing with you next time. You had a car in the background? Yeah, that's, that was on purpose.